And so can we just stand and just pray before we um, kick off in worship? Jesus. Yeah, Father, I just invite you to come tonight, oh God. Father, I invite you to come and fill the whole room. Lord, I just pray that you just have your whole entire way in this place, oh God, that you would not hold back. That, Father, we would not um, dampen the Holy Spirit, oh God, that we would let the Holy Spirit move and do what you want it to do, oh God. Father, I pray for every heart here that it will become prepared and open to receive what you have tonight, oh God. And so, Lord, will you just come in power, oh God. Father, I pray that there'll be healings, oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, that there'll be deliverance in this place tonight, oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, that you would just open the eyes in, of every woman here, oh God, every man here, oh God, that you would just open the spiritual eyes, oh God, that they will see what you have for, right in front of them, oh God. And so, Father, we just give tonight to you. And I just want to um, give you Psalm 30. It says, you have turned from me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, that my glory may sing your praise and not be sighing. Silent. Oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. And I just want to encourage you, come tonight, lay everything down at the cross. You know, your week is over. It's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> just come, lay everything down at the altar tonight because that's the only way God, you're going to let God in. If you take off the rucksack, take off the heaviness of the week, take off all the pressures of the week, then just lay it before the altar and let God really move tonight in you. And, and just... I just want to encourage you, just before worship starts, just to go, God, empty me fill, so you can fill me back up. I just give you everything. Just fill me up tonight, oh God. Lord, that you would leave this place full to the brim, overflowing, running over. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight, we're just going to give him our all. Let's just worship him, make space for him, make room for him. Yeah. In the Bible, it says, we decrease as he increases. And tonight, decrease yourself so that he can increase in you. Leave full tonight. Don't leave empty.
tongues and please do <clears throat> but lift your voices to the king who breaks chains who moves mountains who still speaks to this day but lift your voices praise him
Oh! 
the shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Come after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Come after me There's no shadow you won't light up Darkness running 
out of an empty grave. Now seated alone in glory, and thrown on the highest praise. You send the darkness running out of an empty grave. Now seated alone in glory, and thrown on the highest praise. You sent the darkness running out of an empty grave. I seated alone in glory and thrown on the highest. You sent the darkness. You sent the darkness running. Cause that's how much we mean to you. Out of an empty grave. Now see.
voices. Cause worthy is Yeah. 
Jesus. on the front and I just heard the Lord say that God reward and um, blesses the spiritually aggressive and we were singing reckless love and I was reading the words and I was like this is an aggressive song <laughs> you know there's no wall that he won't kick down to get to you there's no mountain that he won't climb up to get to. mountains are rough to, to climb up I don't know if you've ever climbed a mountain but it's rough to get up there's no wall and as I was singing I was like God this is quite aggressive God reminded me of Jacob, the spirit of Jacob, about how his aggression got the blessings of God. Can I tell you a little story? <laughs> when um, me and John were dating, well, actually we weren't dating, um, John came into um, church and God told me that I was to have a spirit of Jacob, that I was to wrestle with God until he blessed me. Now, I didn't really know what that meant, but I'm like, okay, God, how do I do this? Now, I knew that John was going to be my husband before he did. <laughs> Typical man, didn't, didn't have a clue. In fact, he, did, he didn't have a clue that much. In fact, I would go one step, he hated me. Like, he avoided me like the plague. He didn't want to be around me. He used to avoid taking me home from youth group. But I knew God told me that he was going to be my husband. And that I was to have a, a Jacob spirit, that I was to wrestle with God until he blessed me. So one day I sent John a Valentine's Day card. Uh, I, it was a bit of a psycho thing. I did the little letter cut out newspaper thing, stuck it in a card. Try, I don't know why, because I actually handed it to him, so it wasn't even anonymously. And he ripped it up in front of me. Oh, yeah. He really did. He was like, girl... He was like, girl, I, I don't want to know. Like, I'm not all about girls. I just want God. But I knew God told me that I was to wrestle with him. And so day and night for six months, that's exactly what I did. I prayed. I, I grasped hold of that promise. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And Jacob actually means grasper. I don't know if you know that. But it, I just want to encourage you that whatever you're praying for, grasp it and pray aggressively until God blesses you, because he will bless you. Six months, day and night, I pray, God bless me. I want John as my husband. Lord, I name and claim him. I'm taking him. He's mine. Nobody else's. Turn his eyes towards me. Let him notice me. And he did. And so I want to encourage you. There is no wall that God won't tear down to get to you. There is no mountain he won't climb up to get to you. And so I want to just encourage you, pray. It is the answer for everything. If, if you want to come to me and, and, I'll, and you say, Pastor Keisha, I've got this problem. I'm going to tell you to pray. Because that is the answer. Pray with every aggression you can muster up in your heart until God blesses you. He will reward you. I, I don't have faith for finances. I have more faith for husbands than I do finances. But if you're believing for a financial blessing, that you see that there is no way out, that you're in so much debt, that you're, you're needing some finance. And I, I believe I've heard the Lord. I th and I think there's somebody here that is waiting for a miracle. They, they've got themselves into a bit of a rut. But I hear the Lord say, pray. Come to me aggressively because I will take you out of debt. I will pay that amount that you're praying for off. And so Father, I just pray right now. That whoever it is in this room, that Father, that they would come and give it to you tonight, oh God. That they will get on their knees aggressively until you bless them. And Lord, I pray, oh God, that they would not leave that place of prayer until you bless them. In Jesus' name. 
so faithful he won't ever let you fail amen thank you worship team have you got something you're hijacking (laughs) hallelujah I'm not a woman in case you're wondering what I'm doing on the stage but I just want to honor Mama P just for a moment yeah come on come on show us some love And after she shared that, I just thought, I need to just come on the back of that. (laughs) And I just want to say that if I knew the woman that she would become, I would never have resisted so long. (laughs) You know, I'm blessed not just with a beautiful wife, I'm blessed with a woman of God, a woman of integrity. A woman from the Lord, and we're in the greatest season of our lives, not just spiritually, but in our marriage and in the favor of God being poured out. And also just to honor my beautiful daughters in the room, Esther led so beautifully tonight. And Gracie Beth, my little prophet, being raised up in the Lord. My son's not here tonight, but he completes the unit. And then I've got many spiritual daughters across the room, spiritual sons. But we honor what the Lord has done inside of you. We honor this ministry. You know, this ministry was birthed, was it seven months or ago now? Time seems to go so fast. But we've seen the hand of the Lord. And you're here tonight because of a dream and a vision that the Lord gave her. And uh, we just want to honor that tonight. So will you give her one more big round of applause? Thank you. I'm like, I'm used to the one giving out. It, to receive it is quite difficult. So I feel a bit emotional, but I forgive, I forgive you. I forgive you for not liking me. <laughs> but I actually want to stay standing because I just want to honor, I do have my mother-in-law and John's sister, and my niece in the room tonight. So can we just give them a warm welcome? Amen. Amen. It's so good to have you here with us. But I just want to um, share with you uh, an exciting event we have coming up at Radiance in August. I'm telling you now, so you can save the date. You can take a seat now. Yeah, sorry. I got all excited. I'm telling you now, so you can save the date. This is bigger than any wedding you're going to. (laughs) This is bigger than any holiday you are flying to. (laughs) So I want to show you our little clip first to give you a little taste of what has been happening in Radiance. No longer me that lives. 
God has so much more for you. He has so many more mysteries that he hasn't even told you about. Don't wait for breakthrough. You are the breakthrough that the Lord is waiting for. You are the breakthrough that the Lord wants in your house. We need to pray for eyes that see, ears that hear, hearts that understand. You don't need any oars. You don't need any motors to take you. God's going to power you. The burning of God is not pleasant. It's not. No one wants to be in it. You just got to be willing to go. You just got to be willing to go, yes. Don't be scared to say yes to God. Because God has so much more for you. You just got to be willing to say yes. God has caused a woman to wait. Because he's saying, listen, I don't want to burn something ordinary. I want to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you can ask. How awesome is that? If you think that's good, wait till August. <laughs> Jessica, have you got... There we go. We have got our Warrior Conference in August. We are having a three-day event. This is just a few of the speakers that we have teasing you right now. We have some more surprises to come. But what a wonderful lineup is that. You are going to be mighty blessed. Three day conference? I'm so excited. Wow. Who's ready? Who wants to come to Warrior? Where's the army in the house? Tell your friends. I think the ticket's already on for Eventbrite. There is a small charge for because we've got Jenny Weaver in the house. We've got Pastor Bianca coming back. We're flying Dion from Canada, and we've got Prophetess Nia, and many more to come. Amen. Awesome. Well, it's my privilege and pleasure to have Pastor Bianca back with us in the house. Can we stand and just honor her as she comes? She is a true friend here at Radiance. We love her. We love everything that she does, her ministry. And we're so happy to have you with us. Just give it up for your amazing pastors here again. You guys are just what I love about them. And I think I say this to everybody, and I talk to a lot of people about them, by the way. I think I say this every time I talk about you guys, the same thing comes to mind. And it's amazing when you meet people as incredible on the platform as they are off the platform, right? That is so, when you meet a lot of people, this is something that is truly of value when you see someone who's as great on as they are off and that truly is you guys. You guys are amazing. And, uh, and you guys are so blessed to have them. Can we give them one more little praise of honor? Thank you. You guys can be seated. I am so excited to be here with you guys tonight. I have been waiting for tonight. So I hope that you guys are as expectant as I am. Are you expectant tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. I love it. I want to share with you a word tonight that the Lord put on my heart. And it comes with a little bit of announcement. And the Holy Spirit gave me a little bit of an inkling, a little bit of a vision in to what direction we're going to be going in tonight. And so I believe that tonight is going to be a night full of deliverance. If you need deliverance tonight, tonight is going to be a night where there are going to be cycles broken in your life. Come on, if you've been struggling with a cycle, if it's a cycle of addiction, if it's a cycle of generational curse, if it's something that you've seen reoccurring through the bloodline, whatever it is, generational curses tonight, I believe in the name of Jesus, are going to be broken. Where you can stand and say, this ends with me. It ends today. Come on. Cycles are often linked to some sort of curse. It's like a demonic activity attached to a curse when you see cycles in motion. And I believe that there are going to be mass deliverances in this room tonight, as well as physical healings and as well as destinies coming into alignment. And so I'm pretty excited. Come on. I want to share with you tonight from Mark chapter 5. 
And we're going to go from verse 21 to 43. And it's a passage of scripture that if you've been journeying with the Lord for a little while, you're probably quite familiar with it. But every time I come to the word of the Lord, every time I come into his presence, I come with humility. Every time I come to the presence of the Lord, I come and say, Lord, teach me something new. You know, this word, this Bible, it is not just words on a page. It's the written word of God. It's alive. It's living. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. The Bible tells us that his word is God-breathed, right? This word, inspired by God, the word inspire in the original language means breath or breathed. So in the original culture and language, if you said someone came to life, you'd say they were inspired. And if somebody died, you'd say that they had expired. So when we look at the word of God and the description is that it's inspired by the Lord, it's God breathed. That means that this word, every time that you declare the word of God, you breathe his breath. That is the power of this, of this word tonight. And so I believe even if you've journeyed with the Lord a long time, you may have heard this verse a million times. This is the living breath of the Lord tonight. And there is something fresh he has for you. Amen. Amen. It says here, Mark chapter 5, it says, After Jesus returned from across the lake, a huge crowd of people quickly gathered around him on the shoreline. Just then a man saw that it was Jesus. So he pushed through the crowd. And threw himself down at Jesus' feet. His name was Jairus, a Jewish official who was in charge of the synagogue. He pleaded with Jesus saying over and over, please come with me. My little daughter is at the point of death and she's just 12 years old. Come and lay your hands on her and heal her and she will live. Jesus went with him and a huge crowd followed pressing on him from all sides. So here we have this scripture opens up with an account, with a very vivid, a very descriptive um, scene that it's setting for us of a man called Jairus. Now, this man, it tells us that he was a synagogue official. He was in charge of the synagogue. So this man would have been a very prominent figure of the community. This would have been a very well-educated man. Education wasn't something that everybody had access to. This would have been somebody who had great wealth because they would have been high up in their occupation. This would have been somebody revered and regarded by all of his peers. Yet he finds himself in a crisis. Now, if you know this story, you'll know what's just about to happen. There's a supernatural setup along the way. I'm going to just want you to declare that tonight. Say, tonight is my supernatural setup. Tonight is my supernatural setup. I don't know what brought you here tonight. I don't know how you got here tonight. I don't know if you just agreed to come with a friend. I don't know if you just came because you love this place because it's awesome. But I want you right now to start to lift your level of faith up and say that with faith like you truly believe it. Tonight, no matter how I got here, no matter what condition I'm in right now, no matter what my circumstances look like, tonight is my supernatural setup. Hallelujah. See, what's happening behind the scenes in a parallel of this right now is very, very interesting. We have this prominent, wealthy, well-educated, this almost man of notary amongst his peers, a man regarded by many, who has a daughter who's been sick, who's 12 years old. And he says here that his daughter is right at the point of death. He says, Jesus, come and lay hands on her before she dies so that she may live. And at the same time, what's happening behind the scenes is a woman who's been struggling with a condition for 12 years. It's a beautiful parallel of two stories about to collide in the most amazing setup of what Jesus is about to do. See, for 12 years, you would have had this father so proud of his daughter, living in what looked like one of the greatest situations you could really be existing in. It was a little boy's dream in this culture and context and in this day and age to be working in the synagogue. Every child, every Hebrew boy, every Jewish boy grew up with number one desire to work in the synagogue. 
And they would automatically be put in this process where they would have to qualify for this position. And ultimately, if they didn't make the cup be ruled out and go about their father's business, then their normal jobs. And so this is a man who'd done really, really, really well for himself. And we have this picture of a man who 12 years ago was celebrating the gift of life that he'd been given in his daughter. Yet 12 years ago, there was a woman saying goodbye to life as she knew it. 12 years ago, there was a celebration of a miracle. Yet 12 years ago, for somebody else, there was rejection and shame. I want to tell you tonight that I need Jesus on my best day as much as I need him on my worst day. I don't care if you live in a palace or a pit. I don't care if you've been on the street corners. I don't care if you've been in parliament. I don't care how much you know or who you know or how little you know or how little you regard yourself tonight. Every single one of us needs Jesus just as much as the other. And so we have this account being beautifully set up here and Jesus agrees. And so he goes with Jairus and the Bible tells us that everybody there goes to follow him. Following the lead of Jesus with Jairus, this famous, prominent man there. And he was this woman mustering up all of the courage that she possibly could to come and invade on the scene. See, in this day and age, if you had a medical issue like this particularly, blood, if you had some kind of blood flowing from your body, you would be considered by the community as something called tame. Time was essentially a declaration over you to say that you were unclean. In fact, if you bled in any capacity, you would have to go and remove yourself from society for a period of seven days to go through a ceremonial cleansing. Now, the Bible tells us that this woman had an issue of continual blood flow for 12 years, meaning she would never have been able to graduate to come out of the ceremonial cleansing, meaning she would have lived every single day of those 12 years being declared and labeled unclean, unworthy, and unaccepted. She would have had to remove herself from society, live on the outskirts of town, and it would have been against law and tradition for her to come into contact with anybody. This man, Jairus, as he walked through the streets, they would have shouted him out by name, called after him by name. This lady here, if anybody came into contact or anywhere close to her, She would have had to cover her mouth and shout out, Tame, 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 I'm unclean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. I don't know if tonight you've ever felt like that. Where you've been labeled something that felt unclean. Maybe tonight you know what it's like for society to look at you in a way that disregards the value and the worth and the identity. We know here that this man was known by name, yet this woman has no name. Her name has been stripped from her. Her community has been stripped away from her. Her dignity has been stripped away from her. We don't know how much else was taken from her. This condition in this day and age was such a shameful thing to be known as continuously, without resolve, unclean, that this, if she was married, was legal remit for divorce. No name unaccepted, unloved, unappreciated, a cast out from her community. And whilst we see Jesus walking towards Jairus' house, we see this woman mustering up all that she could, all the faith that she could to go and take hold of her miracle. I loved how Pastor Lucisha was saying that tonight, that sometimes you just got to get aggressive. Sometimes you just got to get aggressive. Listen, we don't serve a man be pan be God. Can I just say something tonight? I'm African, right? Come on. I was born in Johannesburg, South Africa. I grew up in Africa. I moved here a teenager. And so in Africa, we're a little bit more loud and proud than sometimes we can be in a British community all nice and prim and proper. 
But I want to remind you tonight that we don't serve a mamby pamby God. Come on, we serve the lion of the tribe of Judah. We serve the King of Kings. We serve the Lord of Lords. When Jesus went to the cross for you, he didn't just stop at what was dignified. In fact, he was made completely undignified for your salvation, for your healing. He took those 39 lashes on his back for you. There was not any one point that Jesus stopped in his tracks to be a little bit more polite about the sacrifice that was made for me and for you. Sometimes you got to get undignified. Sometimes you've just got to disregard what people would say about you. Sometimes you have to throw off the opinions of other people. You may feel unworthy. You may feel unwelcome. You may feel unaccepted. Sometimes you go through seasons where you're not even sure what your name is, but you feel like the labels of your past and your shame and your mistakes are all that you can see in front of you. And you just have to learn how to throw those things off and get running to the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us that Jairus fell at the feet of Jesus. Now remember, this man would have had access to every natural resource possible. He would have had the money, he would have had the wealth, and he would have had the connections to have already tried every natural avenue to see healing come to his daughter. The Bible tells us that likewise, this woman here with the issue of blood, that she had wasted all of her natural resources, all of her wealth, everything that she had accumulated. She had spent trying to get what only God could have given her. And it tells us not only was she left with nothing at the end of it, but her condition was actually worse. I love how with both of these stories, they're so different. This parallel of completely different people, completely different environments, completely different situations, but both here running to the feet of Jesus. The Bible specifically tells us that they had tried every other resource and nothing had worked. And I don't know who needs to hear this tonight, but I felt the Lord put on my heart to remind you of this. That sometimes God will let the source, will let your supply dry up to redirect you to the source. Sometimes God will allow your supply to dry up to redirect you to the source. Sometimes you're trying to get your affirmation and your value from the voices of those around you. And all of a sudden you see those relationships cut off and those friends start to take a step back. And you sit there and say, God, why are they leaving me? What's wrong with me? God, why is everyone rejecting me? And the Lord is saying, I had to cut off your supply so I could redirect you to the source, which is me and me alone. Otherwise, you will continually live for the voices and approval of men. And if you live for the approval of people, you will die by them too. I don't know what you feel like you have lost. I even hear the Lord say tonight that some of you feel that you have invested in certain situations, invested in certain relationships, even sacrificed for those opportunities, and they fell short. And I hear the Lord say tonight, it wasn't a mistake. God's just reminding you of the source. Hallelujah. So Jesus is on his way in. This woman knows, the Bible tells us that she knows. She knows that if she just touches the hem of Jesus' garment, that she will be healed. Come on, one touch from the Lord is enough tonight, amen? And it looks like all of a sudden, remember Jesus is on his way to heal a 12-year-old girl. And this woman with this 12-year-old issue of blood suddenly invades the scene and it looks for the moment like this is an interruption this is a distraction this wasn't the plan Jesus was on his way somewhere but there are no mistakes in God's design I really felt that tonight that somebody needed to hear that what you believe has been an interruption has just been an opportunity There is something so much bigger at work here. And we're going to go into that in just a second. So with all the faith that she has, she goes to the feet of Jesus to touch his garment. 
Now remember, that was probably something that required a lot of faith for her in that day, just for the miracle that she was believing for. How many of you have been there where you think, okay, this is a big one, God, I'm asking for. I'm coming again, but I'm going to muster up all the faith that I have. Now that aside, this was against the law. Remember what I said at the start? That if she went near any people, she would have to stop and declare, Tame, 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 unclean, unclean, unclean. It was unlawful for her to come into contact with anybody so that they could prevent her from making others unclean. And so not only is this a huge step of faith to fight for, to take hold of her miracle of what she's believing God for, but this is a huge step of faith of the persecution that she's probably going to face from her community. The Bible tells us that she was healed, instantly healed. Yeah. Instantly healed. And I wish we had time to go there because that's awesome in itself. But just tell someone tonight it gets better. Come on, it gets better. She's instantly healed. And the Bible says this. It says Jesus knew at once that someone had touched him. For he felt the power that always surged around him had passed through him for someone to be healed. He turned and spoke to the crowd saying, who touched my clothes? Now can I let you in a little secret here tonight? Yes? Are you still with me? God never asks a question because he's unsure. He's not asking for his own benefit. You know, like when God says to Adam in the Garden of Eden, Adam, where are you? He's not asking because he's confused. He's not asking because he doesn't know the whereabouts. When he's saying to Adam, hey, Adam, where are you? It's not for his benefit. It's so that Adam wakes up and realizes what he's doing. God never asks a question. We see this so many times in the Bible. Where are you? Who was that? Never for God's benefit. Never because he doesn't know. It's always because God is setting something up. So he says, who touched my clothes? And the disciples turn to him and they say, what are you talking about? Remember the start of this verse? It says that the multitudes, the crowds had followed Jesus. And it says that they were hustling around him and they were bumping into him and he was getting nudged from all angles. And so when Jesus says, hey, who touched me? They look at him like, what, which one of the hundreds? What do you mean who touched you? Everybody's touching you. You're in a crowded place filled with people. But see, Jesus knew that only one had come and placed the demand. I wonder how often we just come casually to bump into Jesus. How often we come casually to church to just bump into Jesus. When we put our worship music on in the car, just to bump into Jesus and give him a few minutes of our day. When we open the Bible for a quick scripture so we can bump into Jesus and carry on with our business as usual. See, Jesus knew that there were very many people there. You don't have a fan club without people admiring you. You don't have crowds following you without people thinking highly of you. And so Jesus had crowds of people, who knows how many people, countless people who admired him, who cheered him, who looked up to him, who celebrated him, who maybe even loved him, who maybe even praised him, maybe even recognized him as the Messiah, yet only one put a demand on the anointing. I want to encourage you tonight to put a demand on the anointing of the Lord. Don't just come here tonight casually as much as this is such a wonderful place to be. And I'm so glad that you came here tonight. Believe me, it blesses me so much to see you all here tonight. I would encourage you that sometimes we're waiting on a word from God and God is waiting on a word from you. Sometimes we're waiting for God to meet us here and God has already gone up higher and said, no, I don't want to wait down there for you to meet me. I'm calling you up higher. Come up here and meet me. Some of you tonight just need to muster up the strength and the faith and the boldness and the bravery to say, I'm running to the feet of Jesus and I'm putting a demand on what I'm believing for. You've got to start getting bold. 
You've got to start getting fired up. What is it that you're believing for tonight? Is it financial breakthrough? Maybe tonight you're believing to be a homeowner. I hear that in my spirit tonight. Somebody's believing to be a homeowner. Come on, if that's you right now, put a demand on the anointing. I don't know who in here tonight is believing for a marriage to be restored. Come here tonight. Don't come casually to just bump into Jesus and go home like normal. Put a demand on the anointing tonight. I hear the Lord say tonight, somebody's believing for restoration of mind. Put a demand on the anointing tonight. Decide tonight is the night that I'm leaving here whole. Jesus knew instantly only one in the multitudes of people cheering his name, the multitudes of people celebrating him, multitudes of people even praising him, only one came to put a demand on the anointing. Come on tonight, will you be that one? When I looked at this, and I love the way that the Bible describes it, it says that power that always surged around him, that that power that always surged around him, that there was a breakage in that power when somebody came with a demand and they received that power upon them. And when I looked into it, the Holy Spirit showed me something incredible. I looked up what it means to be a circuit breaker. And do you know what it means? A circuit breaker is described as a cut in the current to fix an issue. And here this is what we see. That circuit, that surge of power. It says that that power, that dunamis, was surging around Jesus all day, all night. That consistent current of power. And what happened was a woman finally got the bravery, got the boldness, got the tenacity to put a demand on the anointing. And as she touched the hem of his garment, that current of power had a breakage as it started to fill her up. And there was a cut in a current. That fixed the issue of blood. The Bible says that she was instantly healed. When I looked into that, I read this as well. It says that a circuit breaker is so powerful that when there's a powerful enough surge of electricity, that a circuit breaker will cause a nationwide blackout. And as soon as I read that, the Holy Spirit reminded me of something in Matthew 27. It says, from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. This is when Jesus was on the cross, when he was warring for me and you. There is both scientific and historical evidence that corroborates the account that as Jesus was on that cross and that surge of supernatural power was going through his veins and he was at war for the salvation of me and you while he was at war for the redemption and the healing and the restoration while he was at war for your destiny. The Bible says it was the joy that was set before him that he went to that cross. And when he died, there was a blackout, nationwide blackout. But it gets better. Come and say that tonight, it gets better. It gets better. It says in Ephesians 1, 19, verse 20, it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? Towards us who what? Believe. Towards us who are perfect? Believe. Towards us who've never done anything wrong? I'm certainly not one of those. Towards us who've never made a mistake. Towards us who can stand in their own merit and righteousness. Towards us who've never been bruised or broken or hurt. It says towards those who believe. This is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us to, who believe according to the working of his mighty power which worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. That word power, did you notice how many times it was used? That word power is the word dunamis. It's the same word for dynamite. Come on, dynamite. It's that explosive. Come on, that uncontainable. That explosive power. Greater than anything that you could ever comprehend. It's that dunamis. It's that power. That exceeding great power that's in you and me. And it says that it was that dunamis power.
power that went into the grave. Some translations say it like this, and I love it. It says that dunamis power wrought him out of the grave. In other words, that dunamis power went into the grave and wrought the body of Jesus up. I believe that for some of you tonight, you're finding yourselves in situations that you don't know how to get out of. I so believe, I have a witness with what Pastor Lucisha was saying. Some of you, there's someone here tonight who's in a financial situation, a desperate situation, and you don't know how you're going to get out of it. I believe the Lord tonight is saying that His power is going to rot you out of that situation. Some of you tonight have been trapped in despair and discouragement and despondency. And you just don't know how to get up out of that anymore. Tonight, that dunamis power is going to come upon you and rot you out of that situation. Some of you have been steeped in addictions. I don't know who this is, but I hear tonight that there's someone in the room who's in a cycle of behavior. And you have no idea how to stop. You've tried everything. You've fasted. You've prayed. You've sought counsel. And I hear the Holy Spirit say tonight that he's going to rot you out of that situation. It's that power. It's available to all who would believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know exactly what this is like. I know I haven't had the honor to share with you my testimony. I know I've got some familiar faces in the room who know me and know a little bit about my story, but when I was about 20 years old, I was in a very, very, very abusive relationship. It went on for years. The culmination happened when I was about 20 years old. This relationship had been abusive in every which capacity and fashion you could think of. This guy was in and out of prison through all of my teen years while we were in this relationship. He was extremely violent. He was abusive emotionally, psychologically, and physically. And that ultimately one day, and we haven't got time to get into it one day, but maybe, maybe we can do that. One day, I remember just a normal average argument. Nothing out of the ordinary. This had become a very customary thing that I would have to experience would just be accusation and arguments and confrontation. And in an absolutely ridiculous, absurd argument that I was being accused of all sorts of things, a similar situation, a very familiar situation I found myself in, lying on the floor with this person's hands around my neck. This wasn't the first or the second. This, I couldn't even tell you how many times that this had happened. But this time was different. This time as I lay there, I remember looking up as he declared that he had the ability to take my life. And I remember as I looked at his face, it was like all of the flesh started to dissolve. And I just saw bone structure and what looked like I was looking at the face of a demon. And as I lay there on the floor and I could feel lightheaded and I knew that this was going further than it ever had gone before. I lay there and I can't even tell you what words... I expressed even silently to the Lord. I, I, I don't think it was even in a prayer. In that moment, I simply acknowledged that if God didn't step in, that I knew that this was going to be it. And as everything started to go fuzzy and then fizzy and then eventually dark, I truly believe that the next destination I would be in would be in a grave. But that power. I can't even tonight tell you what happened in the moments that followed. The very next memory I have is running down the street towards a train. And I know tonight, I may not have any memory or any recollection of what happened in those moments between running for the train and blacking out. But all I know tonight is that that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that took his body out of that grave and raised him back to life, is that same power that took me out of that grave, that took my body, transported it somewhere else, and it's the same power that healed me, that delivered me, that put my heart back together, that restored my mind, that put me on a platform and fills my 
mouth. It's that same power. That same power. It's of no man's merit. Not by might, not by my power, but by the, the Spirit of God. It's that same dunamis power that's here in the room tonight at the feet of Jesus. And I'm telling you that I'm here tonight as living proof. I'm here tonight as evidence to you of what that dunamis power, supernatural dunamis power, resurrection power can do in a person's life. If you would run to God desperate, if you would run to God hungry, if you would run to Him empty. That dunamis power, hallelujah. Acts chapter 19 verse 11 says this. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. That same word wrought. Special miracles. And this is another word I believe I have from the Lord for us tonight. God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. Now every Miracle is amazing. A miracle by nature is something out of the ordinary. A miracle by nature, by very description and use of the word, is something that cannot be explained. So every miracle is amazing. But it says here that God wrought special miracles, unusual miracles, by the hands of Paul. Why? Because it's that same power that the Bible speaks about in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. That you should receive dunamis. You should receive explosive power. You will receive dynamite power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So that you don't just come tonight and walk away with your miracle as much as that's on the hands of the Lord for you. But when you leave here tonight... That you take that dunamis with you. Come on, that's the heart of the Lord. That you come here, you receive all you can. Put a demand on the anointing of the Lord. And that when you leave here tonight, that God can say, I wrought special miracles upon you. Hallelujah. 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 So Jesus calls out to this woman. Who was it who touched me? Who was it who touched me? And he continues to call out to her until she identifies herself. Why? Now again, remember, this was not Jesus actually confused because of the identity of this woman. He knew who this woman was all along. And it says in the Bible that she came in fear to Jesus. Why was she coming in fear? Well, remember, this was a woman who had been declared unclean. And wasn't allowed to be in a society. She wasn't allowed to be in public. She wasn't allowed to be in a community. This woman was content just to take home her miracle on her own and go back to isolation. She was happy to receive her healing and go back to the outskirts. She was happy to receive her miracle in silence and go back to the life that she'd been living. But Jesus wanted so much more for her. I want to tell you tonight, I don't know what you've been content settling for, but God has so much more in store for you. Come on, God has, he doesn't want you to just take your miracle and go back to your circumstances. He doesn't want to just give you a touch tonight to go and live life the same tomorrow. He doesn't want to fill you with his joy and power tonight so you can continue to live under your circumstances on the outside. He wanted so much more for her than what she even believed possible. Now we started this commending her faith for being bold enough to break the law, to put a demand on the anointing for her miracle. Yet that was not the half of it. So she in fear comes and identifies herself and Jesus we see here restoring her, not just physically. We know that that was already done. She'd already been physically healed. But not only was it illegal for her to go and to be in society in public, but it was also highly unlawful for her to come into contact, not just with anybody, but with a rabbi was someone who'd have to go and be clean in a temple. And so what happens here is actually incredible. See, Jesus makes it a public fact that she had touched him. Not only because Jesus did not want this precious woman to leave there healed, but go home broken on the inside. 
He wanted to restore her identity, restore her reputation, restore her community, restore her right standing. He wanted to restore, restore her family. And he was willing to be labeled unclean so she could be made clean. Jesus volunteered the information that he had been made unclean so that she could be made clean in public. When Jesus went to that cross, the Bible says that he became sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He became accursed so that you could be free. What you're believing for tonight, I want you to get this on the inside of you. I don't know what your miracle is tonight. You can fill in the blanks with that. I don't know what your prayer request is tonight. I don't know what you're in need of tonight. I don't know what's been breaking your heart tonight. But know whatever it is that you are believing God for, not only did he pay the price for it, but he took that upon himself so that you could be whole. He was made, declared unclean. So that she could be declared clean and restored publicly. See, what happens here, though, is we see these accounts, these parallels come back. You still with me? Whilst this is happening, news comes about Jairus' daughter. News comes and they say, Jairus, it's, it's too late. She's already dead. Now, I'm sure that Jairus, as a father would be looking at this woman with an issue of blood and I'm sure there'd be all sorts of feelings of anger and rage. And how come that this woman and her interruption because of this healing that took place, my daughter's died. And as we look at this account, this woman there not only being made clean and restored in front of her community and crowds of people, but she was also declared clean in front of Jairus. Now, It's easy to look at this and consider these two complete strangers, but I don't actually believe that they are. I believe that they've met before. Because you see, what would happen is if you had contracted some sort of unclean illness or sickness or infirmity, you would then be taken to the temple where they would declare you ceremonial unclean over you. And that would start the removal of your life from society. And so if we read this and we look at the geography of this setup and the fact that the Bible only speaks of Jairus leading the synagogue, as in this would be the only one in that area, it's likely that they had met before. In fact, it wouldn't be far-fetched that Jairus, who was the leader of the synagogue, might actually have been the one to declare her unclean to begin with those 12 years ago. Not only is she restored by reputation in front of crowds of strangers, but she's restored in front of the very one who labeled her unclean. I don't know what you've been going through. I don't know what people have spoken over you. So often, even in my own life, I've seen there be seasons in my life where I have begged and pleaded with the Lord to remove my enemies from me. But my Bible says that he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Some of you have been feeling frustrated because it looks like the enemy has been constantly on your back. He's not on your back. He's under your feet. And if he's still standing watching, give him a seat to the table in a front row view. Hallelujah. But Jesus actually corrects her. I don't know if you've seen that before. Jesus speaks to her in front of Jairus. He says, daughter, your faith, your personal trust and confidence in me has restored you to health. Notice how Jesus renames her. We start the story with her being just called the woman with the issue. And now she's daughter. That's beautiful. So the news comes that it's, it's too late for Jairus' daughter. And something amazing happens. Now, if you consider the way that they would have to have spread news in this day and age, the reality of this situation is that this interruption into Jairus' schedule was likely not the cause of his daughter's death. 
See, because once Jairus' daughter had died, someone would have had to take that news by foot and walk to find Jesus. And so it's not likely that the time that was spent on this situation would be that far, would outweigh that time it would take for news to travel. But there's something else that is going on here in the way that Jesus corrects her. Jesus says to Jairus, he looks at him and he says in verse 36, don't be afraid, just believe. If we look at that, it says that the word overhearing, when Jesus was overhearing them, is the same word for ignore. And so in essence, what's happening here is bad news is coming to Jairus. It's too late. I know who here tonight feels like it's too late. Maybe you feel like your season's passed. Maybe you feel like you had faith to hold on for 11 years, but on the 12th year, you just feel like it's over. I don't know if you were believing for God to show up in a situation and whilst it still looked like there was life and all of a sudden it looks like that situation's dead and you feel like it's obviously evidently too late, but it says that overhearing, in other words, ignoring what was said, Jesus said, ignore them and don't give in to fear, just believe. You have to learn how to ignore every other word except from the Lord's word. I don't care where the news is coming from. I don't care whose mouth it's coming from. I don't care how much experience they've got. I don't care how much knowledge they've got. I don't care how much notoriety they've got. You've got to learn how to ignore the other voices. Put the shutters on. Ignore the outsiders. Ignore the voices of condemnation and just believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask tonight as we stand and we prepare for the Lord to invade this place. I want to close with this, and I believe that God's going to do something incredibly personal in this place tonight. As much as we can see these two parallel stories happening here, we see now two daughters. One was just a woman with an issue, and now Jesus renames her daughter. Two daughters with issues of infirmity, and we see the two pictures, the two stories here colliding. But Jesus also corrected this woman with something so significant for Jairus. Remember, Jairus was a leader in the synagogue. Jairus would have been so familiar with all of the Jewish customs. They had a sacrifice on a different animal and a different cleansing ritual and a, a different celebration for everything that you could possibly think about. Everything that you could possibly imagine. Sin offerings and atonement and this and that and the other. He would have been so familiar with every religious route to get to God. Every natural resource to get to God, to get from the Lord. Now remember this woman, when she first spoke, we see her say that she says, I know if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Yet Jesus corrects her, and I don't know if you've ever seen that before. He says to her, daughter, your faith and your confidence in me has made you whole. Now why was this a correction? Rabbis in this day and age would wear something called a prayer shawl. And it would be covered with tassels all over his garment, all over the hems. And as the rabbis would be praying, they would touch the tassels and they would say different prayers. And it was believed in this day and age that the more powerful the rabbi, the more powerful the prayers and therefore the more powerful the anointing. And, and they truly believed that a residue of that anointing would be left from his touch all over the tassels. And so when she first showed up and she declared, if I touch the tassels, she was indicating a custom and the belief of the residue of his anointing on the tassels. And he corrects her and he says, this healing, this restoration was not by custom. It wasn't by tradition. It wasn't by fabric. It wasn't by natural means. It wasn't by residue. It wasn't by tradition. It wasn't something you could buy. It wasn't something just from the temple. He says that this healing, this miracle came from your faith and your confidence in me. We know what happened here is 
Jairus' daughter was likely to already be in a condition where she would have been dead upon arrival. Remember, Jairus would have been so familiar with the tassels. He'd have been so familiar with the prayer. And the Bible says that he had the faith at the start of this story to believe that if Jesus had still showed up while she was alive, then that would have been enough for her healing. And so Jesus knew that the faith that Jairus had was not enough for the assignment ahead. And so there was a setup of greater miracle. The Bible says that he uses the foolish to shame the wise. I find this so incredibly ironic that he would use a woman that Jairus would have been declaring unclean. They would have ne- she would have never been allowed in a temple for 12 years. Never allowed to worship in a church for 12 years. And the very person who declared her unclean was the interruption that God would use to build his faith. And without that healing where Jesus could start a little mini preach and start to deliver a message on faith. Daughter, your faith not in the tassels. Daughter, your faith not in religion. Daughter, your faith not in tradition. Your faith not in your natural circumstances. Your faith not in your own ability. Your faith not in your own pastors even. Your faith not in your own righteousness. But daughter, your faith and confidence in me. And Jesus is able to teach Jairus this lesson in preparation for the battle that was ahead of him that he didn't even know about. I want to ask you tonight to just get up on your feet and we're just going to allow the Lord to move. And there are a couple of things that I really felt the Lord put in my heart for us. See, God never sends sickness. He'll never send you sickness. He'll never send you pain. God doesn't send divorce. He doesn't send rejection. None of those things come from the Lord, but you better believe that He'll use them. God didn't send sickness to Jairus' daughter. God didn't send this infirmity, this issue of blood to this woman. But you better believe that He's going to use it. I don't know what you've been looking at tonight as an interruption in your schedule. I don't know what enemies that you felt have been taunting you, staring at you. It may feel, I even hear the Holy Spirit say tonight that some of you have become captivated in competing with your enemies. And the Lord says, just sit at the table and watch Him show off. Sit at the table and watch Him show off. It says He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You have to remind yourself tonight, the enemy may be sitting here in my face, but he's seated at my table. This is my table. This is my destiny. This is my word I'm standing on. This is my calling. This is my testimony. This is my miracle. I believe that some in this room tonight, the Lord wants to rename. This is what I was hearing in my spirit as I was preparing. There are some of you who feel like you have been labeled by your issue, labeled by your brokenness. It's almost like you feel that you can't escape what you went through. And I hear the Lord say tonight that He wants to take you from that to daughter. That's what He did for this woman, publicly declared her. No longer the woman with the issue, the unnamed outcast, but He said, daughter, you have been made whole. Whole. I believe that some tonight just need to run to the feet of Jesus. You just need to run to the feet of Jesus. See, I could stand here tonight and testify about everything that God's done for me. I could be here all night telling you how many times God saved my life, delivered me, healed me, and set me free. But let me tell you, there's nothing that man can do in comparison to running to the feet of Jesus. Sometimes you've just got to run to the feet of Jesus. Sometimes you've just got to take hold of your miracle. Put a demand upon the anointing. Not confidence in yourself. That dunamis power is here tonight. That dunamis power that surged around Jesus. That dunamis power that wrought Him out of the grave. Brought Him from death back to life. That dunamis power is here tonight surging around this room. So tonight I want to ask you to just come running to the feet of Jesus. Whatever miracle you need, if you're here tonight and you need a miracle, if you're here tonight and you need healing, 
I hear tonight that there's someone dealing with a pain. It's in your left side. I don't know if it's a left leg. Do you want to? We're just going to pray. Won't you stretch out your hands? If you need a healing miracle tonight, I believe that there's an incredible surge of the anointing for that miracle. Just come forward as well. I'm just going to call out a few things I felt the Lord lay on my heart. If you just want to run to the altar, you can do that. But I want to call out a few things. And we're just going to pray for people and keep flowing. But I specifically felt tonight that there's someone who believes that they are the issue. That it's like you look at situations and circumstances and you've labeled yourself the issue. I don't know if a parent or a teacher or someone in authority told you that you are a problem, that you are the problem. I just keep hearing that you're the problem, but you have taken that as your identity. You believe you are the issue. I hear the Lord say tonight that He's going to deliver from you from that, that you are not the issue, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. If that's you tonight, just come forward. I hear tonight that there's somebody severely troubled and tormented with what feels like the enemy on constant attack. Constant attack. And it's caused you to want to retreat for the fear of the opposition. I believe the Lord is going to fill you with dunamis power here tonight. Fill you with dunamis power. I believe there's someone else here tonight who's been through an abusive relationship. I don't know if it's with a parent. In fact, I believe there's someone who's been in an abusive environment with a parent. There's someone else who's been in abusive relationships. I believe the Lord wants to give you a touch tonight of healing and restoration. If that's you, please come forward. I believe there's someone else tonight who feels that it's too late for you. I don't know what's happened. I don't know if you messed up or made a mistake. I don't know if you made a bad decision or a wrong turn, but you believe that what God had for you, it's too late, it's over. And I hear the Lord say tonight, this supernatural alignment of time coming. If that's you tonight, please come forward. If you need a healing touch or deliverance, come forward. I believe there's going to be mass deliverance.
the Spirit of the Lord saying tonight that there's an invitation to new clothes. There's an invitation to take off old garments and to be reclothed in this season. And I even feel for someone tonight that it's almost like a wardrobe change. It's almost going to be in the natural as it is in the spiritual. But the Lord is inviting you to be reclothed in this season. The Lord says, would you take off the old garments and would you put on new garments? Take off the old mantle, put on the new mantle. For the Lord says it's time to take off the clothes of the last season. I see you in mourning clothes. You're in the clothes of despair and God says, I'm putting the garments of praise on you tonight. Would you receive new clothes in this house? If you would say that word is for me, I know it was a corporate word, but I believe there's someone in particular that was for. If that was you, just come forward. I want to pray for you. You'd say, tonight, I'm hearing the Lord tell me it's a change of clothes. Yeah. Mashendehi. Take off the gray clothes. Take it right now. I break off depression right now in the name of Jesus. Despair right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord says He's taking off a spirit of heaviness and putting on the garments of praise right now in Jesus' name. All heaviness goes tonight, reclothing you, reclothing you in this season. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Mande, Shimende, Kimando. Shalamandehi, more Jesus. There it is. Take it. 
Shanda babo shete ken rabaye Shanda bahala maso to kura baye Shanda bahala maso to kura maha We take it off right now Jesus I'm hearing the name Sharon as well I'm going to pray for you but I'm also hearing Sharon Sharon Shanda babo shete ken rabaye Holy Ghost receive right now We take off the spirit of depression and we put on the garments of praise right now we break it 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 there it is that's your breakthrough i break that shackle right now in jesus name monday she mendy kiki ki ro shanda baba baba hey phil 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 Phil. thank you holy ghost Thank you Holy Ghost that's tonight's your miracle the, the Lord says he set you up tonight this is your setup it's your setup to step up the Lord says you've been down too long and I just see you it's almost like it's been one thing after the other it's been every situation that's come against you and it's almost like you've been in the dirt and in the dust and the Lord says I've set you up tonight to come to a new higher height the lord says i'm rebranding you i believe there's a rebranding over you the lord says it's even going to be like night and day compared to what he does in this next season it's even going to begin to look like people are going to say to you what's happened to you they won't understand what's taking place even see it with a business the lord says rebrand 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 in this season He's putting something new on the inside of you. You can't do it the way you did it in the last season. The Lord says that the old ways are coming to pass and the new ways are coming forward right now in Jesus' name. And I believe there's even just something to do with PR that the Lord's placed on the inside of you. The public relations anointing that he's releasing even tonight that you'll be able to bridge the gap between people. You're going to bridge the gap even in media and marketing. The Lord says I'm releasing a business anointing upon the inside of you a marketplace anointing says the Lord for there's a rebrand there's a reclothing in this season for the Lord says you're no longer one way uh, wondering whether this is the Lord but in this season you're going to know it's truly the hand of the Lord that has positioned you for such a time as this the Lord says would you allow me to put a new mantle on you would you allow me to put a new power on the inside of you for this is your time to conquer says the Lord you've been down on the ground too long rise up my daughter rise up my daughter and soar you were made for eagle's wings you were made for eagle's wings receive it tonight in jesus name mando shimende ki mando silamende he mashete kirababu shanda babi sande behi phil phil there it is kura bahala maso to kura maha i break grief off your life right now in jesus name I break it off right now. There it is. Take it. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Kura baba bo shanda baba basanda behi. Ki mando shila mando silamende. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Receive right now. Spirit of the Lord say, I place the garment of praise 
deep on the inside of you. The Lord says that deep down on the inside, that the high praises of God have been placed within your spirit. For the Lord says, this is how you fight your battles. This is how you wage your wars. For the Lord says there is deep intercession that is placed on the inside of you. That as you release your praise, the Lord says every stronghold and every principality begins to tumble. For the Lord says, I call you as a warrior. I called you as one to war in the realm of the spirit with the high praises of God in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand, says the Lord. You are not called to be normal. You are not called to the status quo. You are not called to fit in. And even as people have tried to calm you, the Lord says you will never calm a burning ember. You'll never calm a fiery coal. For the Lord says, I place a fiery coal on the inside of you to burn brighter in these end times. And the Lord says, if you will open your mouth, the Lord says, I will fill it. If you will open your mouth, the Lord says, I will release a sword through your song, says the Lord, that will pierce the darkness. For the Lord says, I put a high praise deep on the inside of you. And tonight I'm releasing the warrior. Receive it right now. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Mande kimando shila mande sila mende kilamondo re. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And to hear the Lord saying that this kind of praise is only produced by brokenness. And there's been a season of breaking in your life. It's been just brokenness that's been. Shanda Baha. Lord says it's releasing a fragrance. The brokenness is a sweet smelling aroma in his nostrils. Embrace the journey. Embrace the journey. Mando she mande he. The Lord says I've been refining you in the refiner's fire. You've been in the fire, but you're beginning to come forth as gold. You're coming out as gold. You're coming out with a new song and a new sword, says the Lord. Even as the even as the the the, uh, the, the silver went into the into the fire, the Lord says it now comes out as a new sword in this season. It's being shaped into a sword, says the Lord. The refining process, producing a weapon in the hand of the Lord. For the Lord says, you are my weapon. You are my weapon in this season. You are my weapon, says the Lord. Mande she mende ki mando shila mande she. The Lord says, would you let me wield you? Would you let me wear you like a glove in this season, says the Lord. If you open your mouth, I will fill it. If you open your mouth, the Lord says, I will fill it in this season. Mande shamando. Kimande.
give you glory tonight, Jesus. We give you glory in this room, King Jesus. We give you glory tonight, God. Take your glory, God. Take your glory. Mando, Shimende, Kiki.
<laughs> I love it. Revival's in the air. It's coming. It's coming. We will see revival. We will see it in this city. We will see it in this nation. You just don't want to miss it. Amen. Amen. Can we give Pastor Bianca a huge thank you? We love you. Whew. What a night. What a night. Amen. Been blessed tonight? Awesome. You going to come back for another? Yes, you are. <laughs> Make sure you save August. I don't want to hear none of you are on a vacation, no planes, nowhere. If I'm not going on holiday, you ain't. Amen. Okay. Should we close this thing out? Father, I just release everybody right now, oh God, that they would start this weekend with the joy of the Lord in their hearts and revival in the air. Father, Lord, that we would go into Saturday rejoicing. Father, I pray that every blessing over those who are working this weekend, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Should we do our tradition on the count of three? One, two, three, get rid or radiant, whichever you want.
said you are. 